You know, it's been good switching clubs after losing the World Cup final. It means I've, you know, been able to just put my head down and focus on getting AC Milan, you know, up to how I want them, transfers and tactics and friendlies and working out staff and all that stuff. So um, this is kind of the first time I've thought about losing the World Cup final and it's pretty disappointing, actually. But that is past us now. We are at a new club. It is AC Milan. And obviously, with moving to a first club, the first thing that we have to do is go and look for somewhere to live. Hey guys, what are you here? Welcome to episode 67 of Sunday League to Premier League, a journeyman save. If you're enjoying this type of content and if you've gotten through all 66 episodes so far and you're not subscribed, I'd love it if you could do that. It would mean a lot to me. Tap that bell notification as well, smash that like button. Let me know, have I made a good choice in leaving Bordeaux and coming to AC Milan? Anyway, before we get into the club and we dive into that, let's go house hunting, hey? So here we are with the Halifax Mortgage Calculator, and I can borrow tw just over £20 million, pounds, which is a crazy amount. I'm on £22,000 a week with uh, with Milan, and uh, £60,000 a week with France, so it gives me about £82,000 a week to work with, which is an absolute astronomical amount. So there it is, £20 million. Let's go and uh, have a look at some... Well, let's go have a look at where the San Siro is on the map and where our property is that I found, and then we can uh, we can go and look at the house. All right, so here we are on Google Maps. Here is the San Siro Stadium, and round about... Go away. In here somewhere. If we zoom in a little bit more. Just sort of here. Somewhere in here, I think, is where the... Um, it's a penthouse. You know, I've, I've got a bit of cash. Is the penthouse that I'm gonna I'm gonna get? So you know, it's a nice little cruise across the city here uh, to the San Siro for you know training games and the like. So nice, nice distance away. We you know we've got some good parks here. A lot of um, <clears throat> architecture to go and look at. Which you know, on my days off, uh, I'll be heading also as well to Mr. Dick Miliano, which is a cake shop. So I get all my cakes from. Mr. Dick Miliano. And here is the penthouse that uh, is for sale in uh, Palestro. It is 12 million euros. I think 20 million pounds is about 24 million euros. This is about half. So heaps to spare. Let's uh, let's have a look at the floor plan to begin with. That's, that's a terrible floor plan. Anyway, maybe the photos will be better. Um, so that appears to be like the lounge area. This is the other lounge area. That bath is trippy um, I, like is that my pool or is that the building's pool on the seventh floor 750 square meters nice the shower in the middle of the room is very strange and you can have a little poop here and look out the window and while someone else is on the exercise bike i assume kitchen is very small though very strange house uh, back into, and um, this must be the other bathroom, I think, with a spiral staircase. Very, very flashy. Uh, and the curve, the uh, the curvature of the windows there, getting a lot of good light there. I don't, I'm like, I don't even know what rooms these are, because they just seem to be different apartments. Maybe they are. The red there is very nice. Just a few shots of that same room. There's a view, I'm assuming, from outside. Uh, another view of the city. Some top views, the worst floor plan ever. Oh, that's a little bit better. Um, we've got, we got two two sets of weights here, obviously. Whereas this, I don't know, these floor plans are very confusing. This looks a little bit better. Is this the whole penthouse? Is that how many floors it is? Is it like this many floors? It's very confusing. I'm not going to contact Pellegrini um, Fruccio. Anyway. Let's go and have a look at AC Milan, hey? All right, here we are, back at the club. Little scoot across the city, picked up a cake from Mr. Dick Miliano's on the way. Um, where to start, where to start? New club, a lot of stuff to get through. Um, I'm loving the fact that they have 20 training facilities, 20 youth, 19 youth recruitment, and 17 junior coaching. I'll be asking them for AMPs. 
a couple of things up before we get started. Uh, you can see we've got captain, key player. We all know Raheem Sterling was going to be here, and we have had a look at Salvatore um, Galli before he's out on loan. Though San Siro, we play in seventy five thousand eight hundred and seventeen capacity. Very nice, a very rich history with AC Milan here. Uh, the rivalries, obviously, Atlanta and Inter uh, is the big one, and Napoli as well. Cool. All right, finances-wise, uh, we've still got $28 million in the bank, just under $29 million, but we are in a, uh, a little bit losing in here. Uh, total expenditure, uh, debts and loans. We do have a net debt, so but we should be okay with that. I'm hopefully getting, you know, be pushing for Champions League football in the next couple of years. We are still under the wage budget by a fair heft, about 800 k which is nice. Uh, the club vision, they want me to sign players under the age of 20 for the first team. Not their problem. Work within a wage budget. Also not a problem. Don't go and have a look at my Chatham save because not in a wage budget there. Uh, Quarterfinal of the Europa League. Qualify for the Champions League and semi-final of the Coppa Italia. Work towards being the best of the rest and become recognised as the best of the rest. And I want to do better than that. I want to do better than that because I want to be challenging for the title, okay? That's where I'm going there. We've looked at the club info. It's the transfers. This is the important one here. Um, we've got some transfers going in here, but let's go and have a look at the players that I have uh, I have signed, let go. So the the players out. Let's have a, a quick look here. You won't obviously know too much about these, but um, we had uh, Julian Weigel. He, I mean, he's 34. His physicals are just gone. Their shot. So I sold him 500k to Eintracht Frankfurt, which is a bit of a drop of what we got him for three years ago. But I mean, what could I do? He wasn't my player. Uh, we also let Guzman go. Um, <clears throat> Colombian, 32. Pretty slow for someone who I like to play on the wings, and he wasn't going to play in behind the strikers here. So he's gone to Olympiacos for 7.5 million. Uh, Mike as well. Mike, he wanted to leave. Um, we had a few players wanting to leave, wanting Champions League football. I managed to persuade a few of the others to stay, but Mike had decided that, no, he wants to leave. Allison has just retired, so they came in. We lost a million on him, but he's been a good goalkeeper over the last few years. Yes, I only got 10 million for him. That's all that I could squeeze out of him because, I mean, he's 35, and Liverpool going to have to look for another goalkeeper in a few years. Uh, Elias uh, Solberg, he left to go to Spartak Moscow. Uh, he's I don't know, I couldn't really find a use for him. He's 26 years old, Norwegian. He probably could have fit in my squad, but I thought, you know, there's a little bit of interest, so I thought I would move him on, and we got a fair deal for him, uh, about 13.25 million. Uh, Buendia as well. Um, Pauk came, well, he wanted to leave to go play Champions League football. I'm not even sure they're in the Champions League. I don't know. His contract was running out. He's 33. I thought, let's try and, I mean, look how much he's worth already. Let's try and cash in on him. And I did for 11.75. There's not much I could do there. He wanted to go, so meh. We made 42 million from those and a couple of other small sales. And then I went and spent 102 million. Well, I didn't spend all of it. Uh, Raheem Sterling, you've already seen him. Um, he still looks pretty good for 35-year-old. I don't know how much more we're going to get out of him once uh, this pace and that starts to decline. But anyway, uh, Raymond en Enriquez, he's coming on loan. He's joining permanently. For £29 million mandatory fee next year, which I'm not too happy about, as he's a bit so so, I think, and he's 29. So, uh, I mean, I'm supposed to sign players under 22, but apparently anyone else that doesn't matter. These are the rest of the players here. These are the players that I bought in. The first one, which you've probably seen, is uh, Willem Goebbels from Bordeaux. He was transfer listed, so I have paid £20 million for him. Now, you're probably thinking, duty's 29. You're just having to go at the director of football for signing a 29 year old. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. But I needed someone who can play on the left and the right, potentially up front. I know he does a good job and he was available relatively cheaply. So Bordeaux have made out, I've shifted a bit of money their way. Um, just couldn't really sign anyone else because the players are really expensive. I've done a good job there, I think. Um, but anyway. We have signed this guy here from. Oh no, I didn't sign this guy either. He was already he was already arranged. Thirty one year old Gianluca Fabrotta. He's been playing over in Portugal uh, for the last what six seven years and been doing a pretty good job there. So he's our starting left back and he looks pretty good. So once not my signing, but anyway, seventeen million there. My first signing with this guy for six hundred k, Ivan Sr um, Sr Srijevic. 
So I have him. Uh, I have my eye on this guy for a while. He's very small, jumping reach of two, um, but I I really like him. I think he's 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 going to be good. So he's come in. He's down in the under twenties at the moment. Didn't cost a lot of money, obviously, but had my eye on him for a while at Bordeaux. He would have been coming to Bordeaux if I had stayed there. Um, we obviously needed a goalkeeper, so we went in for Martin uh, Van de Voort, a uh, 28-year-old Belgian goalkeeper. Cost me a, a bit of a chunk of money, $17 million. He's been playing in Italy, in uh, Genoa now for two years on loan, so he's got a bit of uh, Serie A experience there, which is good. And he's better than Al at Bordeaux, so I thought, why not? Uh, the next player we brought in here is Mario Di Angelis. He has actually gone back out to Argentina on loan. He's a 22-year-old uh, central defender. Uh, he's got good long shots, determination, flair, very good here, balance. I think he could be a good player. He's only rated three stars at the moment, but, you know, we'll see how we go. He was relatively cheap at five million. So, uh, you know, he'll come back, his value will go up, and we might sell him. It's one of those sort of players. See if he works out, he works out. Andrea uh, Rotano from um, Torino has come in. He can play on both wings, predominantly on the right. Very strong left-footed, though. Uh, he's I kind of signed him because there were some other clubs coming in for him, and his pace and acceleration was probably at the lower end of the scouting. But he is four-and-a-half star potential. Could be very, very good. Good technique, good dribbling, good first touch, good determination. He is volatile and media-friendly, which is weird. So he's coming in from Torino. Uh, I think they were relegated, were they? Yes, Torino have been relegated, so I picked him up at 12.5 million. Uh, quite happy with that. I like the versatility of Mawingas being able to play on both sides. Uh, Marco uh, Lucci, he has come in. He is a 21-year-old. Uh, I think he looks quite good. He's four-star potential, two stars at the moment. He's just come in because he was weirdly transfer listed at um, Cagliari, and I was like, for 175k, he's already worth almost 5 million. I can't go wrong with this guy. So, yeah, that's why I signed him. Uh, William Gomes, you've seen him. This is my big defender. Uh, Bilal Zimmer, French. French defender. I was about to say I have no idea who he is because he's not even in the national team, I don't think. Yes, he's not even in the national team. We'll add him there now because I think he'll be quite good. Uh, Amini Beefield. Uh, they got relegated from the Bundesliga. It cost 700k from Mets in France. That's a great deal they've got. And um, pocketed 21 million, which was his relegation release clause. He's not too bad technically with his heading, marking, and tackling. Uh, where he really shines is these mentals here. Have a look at this. He, well, his aggression is fairly good too. But anticipation, bravery, composure, concentration, decisions, and determinations. Good positioning. His teamwork, vision, role, work rate is all really good too. And his physicals are nice too. He's really pacey. He's not the tallest jumping reach isn't great, but I think he is going to be a really, really awesome centre back. And weirdly, has been playing on the left and the right of midfield at some points during his career. Anyway, and the last signing is uh, Bento Sangala. He is Angolan Portuguese right back, midfielder, right winger, jack of all trades, master of none, two star current ability, and maybe two and a half, maybe three and a half. Uh, once again, he's got some decent mentals, decent physicals, and uh, one of those players, again, coming in from a million, and, you know, that resell value there, potential as well, but a good squad player as well, as I need to try and get a lot of fronts here working through. So that's all the players in. We might need another striker. I'll see how we go. Staffing-wise, we're looking pretty good. I still probably could do with some more physios and sports scientists, but they won't let me get them, and maybe just tip that goalkeeping handling up a tiny bit. But we're looking really good everywhere. I brought some staff over with me, uh, a couple of scouts. Ibram Barr was one. He came with me. Uh, a couple of my physios came over as well, so looking good there. Tactics-wise, this is how we're going to line up. It is the Kralos Revenge, the 4-3-3 kind of, I guess, if you want to call that. It's exactly the same as before. It's done good with us. I love also in Italy how the fact you get 12 subs on the bench, which is crazy. I literally just have a whole team on the bench. You can still only make three subs, I'm pretty sure, but having all those options is brilliant. So we're going to just go through some of the team that you haven't met yet, uh, and then we will actually play a game against Udinese. So we've got here at right back, we've got uh, David uh, Calabria. He's our captain. He's 33 years old. But, you know, not too bad. You'll probably know about uh, Tamori, World Cup winner. Shh, we're going to talk about that. He still looks really good. He's one of the ones I managed to convince to not leave for Champions League football. 
His partner in crime in uh, Center of Defense is Dragan Halisic. He's a 24-year-old Croatian, uh, and he looks fairly decent as well. He's not the tallest either, uh, but once again, he's got some really good um, mentals there as well. Uh, Fabrotto, you've seen. Uh, Brian uh, Cristante as well, 35-year-old Italian from Roma. He still looks pretty good at 35. But some of these guys might be their last, second, last season. We'll see. The ball-winning midfielder in the middle is going to be Tommaso um, Pobega here. He's AC Milan uh, trained at club, so he's pretty decent as well. I like him. He's only 31. Yes, in Adley, you would have seen uh, in the World Cup playing for France. Uh, from Bordeaux as well, so how funny is that? He's decent midfielder there as well. We've got Sterling on the right. Uh, Diaby, Musa Diaby, I pointed about a few episodes ago, came from Tottenham for a lot of money. He is rapid, which is good. And our striker up top is Sebastiano Esposito. Uh, he looks pretty good. Uh, he's got good technique. You know, his decisions are good. Off the ball is great. He's not the quickest, but he is pretty good. He's another one who managed to convince us to stay here. My only problem with him is this. His goal-scoring record since he joined us, he's had two seasons of 10. He's getting good average ratings, so, but I'm looking to bump those numbers up if we're going to do anything. Uh, a couple of players on the bench. We've got Timothy Castagna as the reserve left back. Um, you've all seen Zimmer. We've got uh, Mignelli, a couple of young kids here. Goebbels. This is my other backup striker here. I've got two of them. Um, Frank Dauda. He's not too bad. He's really, really rapid. Good dribbling, good first touch. So uh, we'll see how he goes. He wanted to leave as well, but I persuaded him to stay uh, unless a bid comes in of 6.75, but no one's interested in him at the moment. And my other striker is the Kosovan uh, Azim uh, Thaki. Thaki, he's, you know, he's not too bad as well. So him and him and Frank will be tossing up for that backup striker spot. Um, got a lot of experience there for uh, Kosovo. So that is the team, a couple of other players in here and whatnot who you'll eventually meet over the next coming days. But whew, that was 15 minutes of house hunting and team transfers going through. So let's go and play Udinese, hey? All right, team selection, you've seen the team. We don't have any more time to waste. Let's get into it. All right, we're going to start off pointing fingers. Go out there and impress me. Obviously, uh, I don't, I think there's about eight players in this dressing room who support me. Um, obviously, new manager and all that. Udinese, uh, anyone here who stands out? Jonas Wind, yep, we all know Jonas Wind. Let's kick off. Udinese, my first game managing in Italy in FM22. And I think this is also the first time that I have ever managed AC Milan in all of my career of playing championship and football manager, which is a bit strange, really, but I haven't managed in Italy a lot. Um, one thing that did scare me about Italy is their foreign player rule. Um, in in football manager nowadays, it, it's very, very confusing. It's like you can have this many foreign players, and if you sign, if you get rid of one, you can sign another one, but this one can be registered. The rules are confusing, but Sterling heads over the bar as we create our first chance of the game, but I'm trying to, you know, trying to figure it out. But anyway, let's have a quick look at Jonas Wind. And you can't see because of my head, but he looks fairly decent. Anyway, it is a throw for Udinese now. Oh, I didn't even show you how we went in our friendlies. We won them all. Now, we played some teams in China. We beat uh, Bayern and Atleti, though, so that was encouraging. Yavi now over on the left. Using Sterling, I was going to call him a deal, but Esposito with the opening goal of the season. It's not a deal, it's Adley. It's Yasin Adley. Oh, I'm going to get those two mixed up. Maybe I should try and sign a deal. But that is a great start, Esposito on his way for 20 goals. Fingers. All right, we're back on the ball again. Um, who was it, Tomore and um, Cal Calabria, the captain, they're not quite fit to play a full game, so they'll probably come be coming off at some point, but <laughs> 12 subs, don't need to worry about it. As you can see, they're both sort of tying them at, at the moment, as is uh, Pobega, but we're coming up to halftime. Who's on 6.4? I thought someone was on a 6.4, but anyway, we're going to point the finger, uh, go out there and give the fans their money worth. I'm not going to thrash the arms. You weren't that bad, but I have faith in you. Good. It's a good start. I'm really confident this season about getting that top four spot. And we don't want to lay a score here. Yeah, we want the league table. Obviously, we've got some big teams in here. We know Atlanta. We know uh, Roma, Lazio, uh, Juventus, although they are at the bottom of the table. How weird is that? 
Let's go and make uh, those substitutions now as both Tamore and Calabria were not going to be able to play a full game. So I'm going to bring on uh, Zimmer for his debut, debut and Mads Rosler. When we have Brentford, if memory serves me correctly, he's going to come on at right back, is he? Or we're going to go Castagna. Yeah, Castagna. Castagna is another player as well. He's actually leaving at the end of his contract. But he's 34 years old. I'm probably not going to... I wouldn't sign him anyway. And I could sell him, but I'm not going to get him enough money from an attack. He can play on both sides. Is um, definitely something that I, uh, I like. So we're going to keep him here for a year. And then we're going to let him go when his contract expires. And no harm, no foul. I would really, really like to uh, to get another goal at this point. That would be nice. Is Zimmer on the ball now? Uh, Pobega back to Zimmer. Zimmer now to Dragon Helisic. Pobega, Zimmer. Pobega, Zimmer, and Helisic are just playing their own little three man game here. Diaby picks up the ball, but it is hoofed out by the Udinese. Uh, defense it is Zimmer on the ball now out to DRB and Sterling. Oh, how did Sterling not score? But Sterling does score, but it is. Did that go in the back of the net? I swear that went in the back of the net. Obviously, it didn't. Um, okay, Sterling's knackered and he's playing really poorly on a 6.3. We're going to take him off for Wilhelm Goebbels and Udinese through Marco Trevisian have equalized in the 69th minute. That is frustrating. Um, I've made four subs. Can I make any more? No, three subs, I mean, and I can only make three. I'm going to shout out the boys now and demand some more. This is not quite the start I, was, I had envisioned, but from away from home, the boys are still figuring out a new tactic. Not much is going to... I think we're going to peter out for a draw. We're going to chuck it up to very attacking, and we're going to demand some more here for the final sort of five, seven minutes. I bet you we won't get a highlight. Don't look like it. Nope. Nope. Oh, we've got one. We've got one here. Oh. Is uh, William Goebbels on the ball now? DRB. DRB. Esposito. Oh, is he hit the post? He's hit the post. Fabrotta now getting the ball back in. It is headed away by Dwayne Daisy. Fabrotta again in. And Cristante heads over the bar and that is probably going to be it. I thought Esposito had won it for us then, but no. We had an XG of two, 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 probably should have scored again. Slightly disappointing that we didn't get four points from that one. Um, I'm going to say it was disappointing, you know. I'm not going to molly call these boys just because it's my, um, um, you know, it's my first game. Oh, that was disappointing, really. Also, oh, my assistant manager is one of my favourite uh, championship manager players. It is Miroslav Klosa, uh, the German international. Great at managing people. Other stuff, me, okay, but uh, I need an assistant manager, so I got him in. He looked pretty, pretty good. Um, disappointing. We really should have won that game. But anyway, we've got the Europa League draw coming up soon. Uh, obviously, we won't do that on camera, but I'll probably come back for maybe that first Europa Cup game. And we might play, or oh, I don't know, might be Lazio, or oh, we've got Inter. Yes, we'll come back, I think, for Inter. That obviously is the, um, the big derby around here, so I've heard. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, if you have and you're not subscribed to the channel and you got all this way, if you could do that for me, it would mean a lot. Tap that bell notification, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.